first episode of RC Peppers. So what we're doing on this channel is we're doing radial controlled construction equipment assisted gardening, if that's a thing. And if it's not a thing, we're creating it now. What we're going to do is basically, I've got a fleet of equipment and we're going to use it as much as we possibly can to try and plant and maintain and harvest my garden. I'm not afraid to succeed with this, I'm not afraid to fail at it either. I don't expect everything to work. As a result, if it works, great, I'll show it to you. If it fails, I'm going to show you that too because no one's done this before and I don't think everything's going to work according to plan. We've got a whole bunch of different types of peppers that we're going to be growing. As well, we're going to be doing some garlic, cucumbers, beets, and onions. Sometime along the life of the channel, we're going to transition over to some cooking stuff. I'm going to show you how to do pickled garlic, ghost pepper salsa, fermented hot sauce, hot jelly, candied jalapenos, ghost pepper dill pickles, all sorts of fun and yummy stuff. Throughout the course of the channel, I'm also going to be evaluating the performance of the RC equipment themselves. Let you know which ones are actually suited for real use and which ones are better left alone. So in episode one, what we'll be doing is basically showing you back to January where we started and how we got to where we are right now. We've got to plant a bunch of seeds. We've got to transplant a bunch of plants. We've got to build a greenhouse. So without any further delay, let's get started. So here's what I'm planning on planting this year. I got uh, quite a big variety of spicy and pretty cool peppers. I got a couple that are just ornamental, a purple flash, a phileus blue. Finally got my hands on the elusive Kang Star seeds. I'm really pumped to grow those this year. Chocolate Fatelli I've been trying to get. I got those finally. I'm excited to see the fish pepper. Borg 9. I've grown some of the ghosts I used last year. They grew really well, so I'll use those same seeds again. Same as the chocolate butla, cayenne, the reaper, the Swiss chocolate seems pretty interesting. And a seed called Mad Balls Chocolate Cross, you just have to grow that. So what we're gonna do now, I'm just gonna give these guys a little soaking. I'm not gonna bother trying with the Ziploc bag and the paper towel trick. I'm just gonna throw dirt and water and see what we get. Just give them a good thorough soak. Oh, I got all my labels made now. Got all these seeds from the Reddit Seed Exchange this year. Juanito, if you happen to see this, there's a big shout out. Thanks for doing this for all of us. Made my Christmas to get this package in the mail. So what we're gonna do now is just poke some holes, start seeding some seeds. And all you do is you just gotta go and just poke a little hole in the middle. What I do is I just put them just below the depth of the seed itself. And then I'll just put just a little dirt on top just to keep it moist. Hopefully they all germinate. I'm gonna plant six of each. I don't know what kind of germination rate I'm gonna get, but hopefully I get at least a couple of every one. All right, so I got everything planted now. Today is January the 13th. I'm gonna put the lids on these. I got a grow tent in the garage where I'm gonna germinate them in the dark. I got a couple blankets on the floor to keep them warm, plus a heating pad. And we'll check back in a couple weeks. We're gonna leave the vents just cracked. We get a little airflow circulating through there. So here's my grow tent set up. This is a little two by four tent. Got a ventilation system, two 1,000 watt lights. Like you can see, there's a heat mat underneath them. And I got a couple towels down there just to kind of keep it a bit warmer. The fastest ones I've seen come up were actually the Cayennes. I have a normal Cayenne and a golden Cayenne. Seven Pot 7DX. The Borg 9s, all of them surprisingly came up very fast. The Bubba come up quick, I got a couple of those already. The Sugar Rush Peach Ahis. I decided to go with a six inch pot versus a normal so smaller pot like a solo cup or something. I'm starting them extra early and I want to give them extra time to get as big as they can before I put them in the ground. As a result, I used up all the space I have for my seedlings, so I had to buy another grow tent today. That'll be here in a couple days. This is a 2x4, I can fit 32 of these pots in here. I ordered a 4x4, four four, so I'm good for another 64. Hopefully that's enough. Now I'm just back to checking the germination trays every day, seeing if anything new is coming up. And hopefully I can transplant some more stuff here soon. Well, today's May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Just checking in, I got some cucumbers started here. And I got probably about 50 head of garlic started. I want to grow enough to use and keep enough for seed next year. The grow tent is also coming along well. We're about two weeks out from planting. And what we're going to do is for the last two weeks, 
I'm not sure if it's the right move or not, but we're gonna go from just a uh, veg, we're gonna hit the bloom on these as well and really give them a lot of light. Some of these guys are getting really big already. It's getting pretty crowded in here. There's probably 50 or 60 plants in here from just mild peppers to all the way up to reapers and other super hots. But watch what happens when we hit the bloom. It gets a lot brighter in here. This is one of those cob LED light boards. Without the bloom on, I don't need a ventilation fan so much, but once you get all these lights going at the same time, the heat this thing throws off is crazy. So right now, uh, we're at about a comparable 21 in here at the plants. That's good enough. Down here, I just wanted to take the time to show you what I got going on my winter in the greenhouse here in the basement. we we'll tie bird peppers here. They're just starting to come in. Got some nice peppers growing there. I got some reapers and such over there. But I want to show you what is possible when you can keep these plants alive and you get your second third harvest. This ghost pepper here, I planted him in probably about March of last year. This will be my second harvest. And I have just an amazing amount of nice sized plump ghosts on this plant. I wouldn't be surprised if I get 40 or 50 off just this one. So probably in a week or so I'll harvest all these guys. They're looking really good. I'll have some nice fresh seeds to germinate and start growing. See how many peppers we get off the plant this time.
Well, after all this hard work, finally start to get using the equipment. What I want to create is I want to create a raised area here where I can offload and unload materials and stage some equipment. And this will be three sided. There'll be a four foot brick wall going here as well where I can store some materials. So my first step I'm going to be doing is just to flatten the area around here and try to compact it a bit. And that'll kind of be just my, my yard, so to speak. So now we're going to try and flatten the ground about, out a bit more, try and smooth it. And we'll see if this thing's strong enough to pull a 2x4. So today's May 25th, I had to pull an audible with this project so far and this is one of the unexpected errors I ran into is that my truck has zero clearance and you try to pack down the dirt and it's spongy so it bounces right back and so if I don't have a perfectly flat surface to move this equipment on I won't be able to use it so what I had to do is I basically had to flatten as much as I could and what I'm gonna do is build some roads. So my plan is, is I'm gonna make roads using the coarser gravel here, this is aquarium rock. And then when that's done, I'm gonna give it a top covering with this finer stuff. And hopefully this works.
I can work with that. So I built a foundation for my stationary crane because on uh, soft dirt it probably wouldn't be very stable. I just used quarter inch MDF and four nine inch pieces of threaded rod. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to weight it down with the aquarium stone that's no longer useful to me and then cover it up with dirt and we'll have a good crane foundation. So that's all for today. Let me know what you think and leave a comment down below. And if you like the video, please click like and even better, click subscribe and help me grow the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next episode.